The moon sometimes appears to move mysteriously. Throughout the previous two centuries, there has been rapid industrialization and an increase in technical sophistication, and it appears that we have forgotten the extent of our impact on the environment. The atmosphere, the oceans and the Earth's surface are all places where we have left our mark on the environment today. In order to compete, there is now a second player in the sky, the Moon. NASA has announced that the Moon is shifting and the Earth's rising sea level will cause high tides to become even higher in the near future, eventually causing catastrophic floods throughout the world. Why is it anticipated that this shifting phenomenon would cause more flooding on Earth? Is there any way to prevent this disaster? Let's find out. The frequency and intensity of hurricanes and other extreme weather events have already increased due to climate change. A lesser-known danger that might cause devastation on American shores is approaching, though. When tides rise by around 2 feet, that's 0.6 meters, over the daily normal high tide and start to spill onto the streets or seep down storm drains, high tide floods, sometimes known as nuisance floods, happen in coastal communities. True to their moniker, these floods inundate streets and homes, they force businesses to close and cause cesspools to overflow. But the longer they linger, the more damage they can cause. The Moon's gravitational pull on Earth is mostly to blame for high tides. But the strength of the attraction fluctuates from year to year, since our planet's sole natural satellite wobbles gradually over a predictable 18.6-year cycle. Yet the outcome is two tides that occur simultaneously, one on the side of Earth that faces the Moon and the other on the other side. The Moon circles around Earth far more slowly than it does on its axis. While the Moon's gravitational pull tries to push the tidal bulge backward, our planet's quick rotation and faster orbital speed around the Sun draw it forward. Hence, the Earth experiences tidal friction a drag force that has caused its spinning period to slow from 5 hours to 23 hours and 56 minutes today. The Moon orbits the Earth in 27.3 days, which is also how long it takes for it to rotate once on its axis. Synchronous rotation is the name for this. In other words, the Moon and Earth are tidally locked, thus no matter where the Moon is in its orbit, we always view the same side of the Moon. In addition, the Moon appears to shake and nod, a phenomenon known as libration. The swaying resembles the back-and-forth movement of a basic pendulum. It is as a result of the Moon's elliptical orbit around Earth and its non-uniform speed. As the Moon approaches the perigee, which is the point closest to Earth, the orbital speed quickens. The distance from the Earth's surface decreases as it moves away from the perigee and toward the apogee. The Moon wobbles back and forth by about 7 degrees in the east-west direction, at least to human eyes, as a result of this steady increase and reduction in orbital speed. The Moon's rotational axis is 1.5 degrees inclined away from its orbital plane, which contributes to the motion of the Moon. Moreover, the Moon's orbital plane is 5 degrees more inclined than the Earth's orbital plane. The overall result of these tendencies is a nodding up and down wobbling in a north-south direction. Coupled with global warming, moon wobble can either make tides more severe or less severe. High tides are lower than normal and low tides are higher than normal during one half of the 18.6-year wobbling cycle, making the difference between the two relatively minimal. As a result, it somewhat mitigates the impact of increasing oceans. The spread between the highest and lowest tides widens throughout the second part of the cycle, when high tides grow larger and low tides get smaller. The consequences of the sea level rise are amplified by this cycle. Although the sea level has begun to increase owing to climate change, the Moon is currently in the phase where the tides are amplified. However, a recent study from NASA and the University of Hawaii that was just days before the recent destructive flood in Western Europe was published in the peer-reviewed scientific journal Nature Climate Change, warns that Earth may experience record flooding in the mid-2030s when the Moon's next tide amplification cycle is scheduled to occur. 
By then, sea levels will have increased sufficiently for the already problematic high tides to become particularly problematic. The study is the first to consider all recognized astronomical and marine sources of floods. Researchers discovered flooding in American coastal cities could be several times worse in the 2030s, when the next moon wobble is anticipated to start. This was discovered by mapping the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's NOAA, sea level rise scenarios, flooding thresholds and astronomical cycles. They anticipate that the flooding will seriously harm infrastructure and force communities to relocate. The lunar wobble is a natural occurrence that was first noted in 1728, despite the study's emphasis on the catastrophic situation facing coastal communities. Every 18.6 years, the Moon's orbit causes periods of greater and lower tides. However, these tides are not hazardous in and of themselves. This anticipated rise in flood days is caused by a number of variables. One is the rising sea level. Glacial ice is melting at an historic rate and releasing massive amounts of meltwater into the ocean as global warming warms the atmosphere. Due to this, the average sea level has increased by 8 to 9 inches or 21 to 24 centimeters since 1880, with just the past 25 years accounting for nearly a third of that increase, according to NOAA. Depending on how efficiently humans limit greenhouse gas emissions in the upcoming decades, sea levels might rise anywhere from 12 inches, that's 0.3 meters, to 8.2 feet, that's 2.5 meters, over where they were in 2000 by the year 2100. High tide floods will become more common as sea levels rise, but they'll have a little help from the Moon and other celestial bodies. In half of the Moon's 18.6-year cycle, Earth's regular daily tides are suppressed. High tides are lower than normal and low tides are higher than normal, NASA explains. In the other half of the cycle, tides are amplified. High tides get higher and low tides get lower. Global sea level rise pushes high tides in only one direction, higher. So, half of the 18.6-year lunar cycle counteracts the effect of sea level rise on high tides, and the other half increases the effect. Yet scientists are more worried this time. The upcoming high tide floods are anticipated to be more severe and more frequent than ever before due to sea level rise brought on by climate change, worsening already dire projections. In 2019, NOAA reported over 600 instances of these floods. When sea level rise has another 10 years to advance, scientists predict that the quantity will be three to four times higher by the middle of the 2030s. According to the study, these floods will exceed flooding thresholds around the country more often and can occur in clusters lasting more than a month, depending on the positions of the Moon, Earth and Sun. Floods may occur as frequently as every day or every other day during specific alignments. Low-lying areas near sea level are increasingly at risk and suffering due to the increased flooding and it will only get worse, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. The combination of the Moon's gravitational pull, rising sea levels and climate change will continue to exacerbate the coastal flooding on our coastlines and across the world. These impacts are anticipated for virtually all of the U.S. mainland's coastlines, Hawaii and Guam. By the end of the century, sea level rise is predicted to have rendered hundreds of thousands of square kilometers of coastline unusable and could have forced more than 100 million people from their homes. The study predicts that severe floods will occur more frequently every day or every other day in the coastal countries, exceeding flooding thresholds. Depending on the positions of the Moon, Earth and Sun, they might even appear in clusters and last for a month or longer. Researchers are hoping that their findings would spur more committed efforts to limit harm to the environment and people's livelihoods as much as possible before it's too late. Although high tide floods don't entail as much water as storms do, their regularity poses a greater threat. It is the accumulated effect over time that will have an impact, the study warns. If it floods 10 or 15 times a month, 
A business can't keep operating with its parking lot underwater. People lose their jobs because they can't get to work. Seeping cesspools become a public health issue. It also acknowledges that not every shoreline in the world will experience the prediction's effects equally. The frequency and intensity of hurricanes, floods and other extreme weather events have already increased due to climate change. The already dire projections of climate change for individuals who live along the beaches could be made even worse by this imminent threat on the horizon. The researchers discovered that by the time the next tide amplifying cycle starts in the mid-2030s, global sea levels will have increased sufficiently to make those higher than normal high tides particularly problematic. Currently, we are in the tide amplifying phase of the cycle. The study predicted that high tide flooding will occur quickly along the whole US coast as a result of the interaction between the lunar cycle and sea level rise. High tide flooding will change from a regional concern to a national issue, with a majority of US coastlines being affected in a little more than 10 years, according to the authors. These flood days will cluster at specific times of the year due to other aspects of the climate cycle, such as El Nino episodes resulting in months' worth of non-stop coastal flooding. As terrifying as this pattern may appear, it is crucial to comprehend it for planning purposes. When they pound America's coasts, extreme weather events may dominate the national spotlight, but high tide flooding will soon be impossible to ignore. It's best to begin preparing for it right away before it's too late. New York City, Miami and New Orleans are just a few of the largest cities that will be severely impacted on the Atlantic and Gulf coasts of the United States. A big danger city is Osaka in Japan, according to climate simulations. Increasing tides might cause the city to disappear. Alexandria, Egypt, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil and Shanghai, China are other high-risk cities. It took Noah years to construct the ark that would protect him and his family from the godless civilization that God was about to wipe out with a devastating flood. Unlike Noah, we have roughly 15 years to construct the mitigation and adaptation plan that will protect humanity from the catastrophic repercussions of climate change. As a result, there is a race against time since the water is approaching quicker than previously anticipated. In order to prepare, protect and avoid damage to the ecosystem and people's livelihoods affected by flooding, NASA's Sea Level Change Team is already disseminating essential information. Finally, our moon has remained true to its nature and its power is never weakened throughout its time as the serene, magical entity majestically glowing in the sky. Its ability to produce record floods is one of the powers it has always used, even though we were never aware of it. It will use this power again roughly 15 years from now, but this time in conjunction with climate change. Perhaps the floods will give our leaders, who aren't doing enough to stop climate change, a justification to give up by blaming the wobbly moon. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.